Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jade from ThemeCo, bringing you the first installment of our new video series, Creative Columns. In this series, we aim to not only show you different column designs you can create through the Content Builder, but to also show you ways on how to extend the Builder's functionality in case there is no out-of-the-box option available to achieve the layout or design you want to create. So, in this first video, I will be walking you through how to turn a simple column design to a more creative one by adding a double intersecting border just like this and further amp it up by adding an animation hover effect like this. So let's now jump into the builder and get started. So I have a simple column here where I added an image headline text and a button elements in it. As for now, it looks quite simple, but our goal is to add intersecting borders around it. We won't be able to use the default column border options because we're going to have the basic border, which will be a border around the column. So since we are trying to achieve a more advanced or creative type of border, we're not going to use that. We're going to achieve that by adding a few elements inside a column and then later on add some custom CSS to actually style the newly added elements as the borders. So first step would be completing the baseline of our setup, which is to add a content area. This will s serve as our base for this setup. We're going to have to add two and one of them will be our horizontal borders and then the other will be the vertical borders. So to specify which our horizontal and vertical borders are, we can assign a class to each of the content area. So let's say this one is horizontal. And then the other one would, will be the vertical. So that is all we have to add to our columns. Now we're ready to add some custom CSS to actually make them look like borders. And we're going to do that by adding the CSS codes in the columns element CSS. We're going to do this right now so that we'll be able to restrict the CSS code that we're adding only to this column. And let's add our CSS. Firstly, we have to set the positions of the content areas to absolute. We have to do this so that we will have better control of the positions of our borders later. Next, we'll work on making our horizontal borders visible. We will be using the CSS border property for this, and since we will need to output horizontal lines, we will add a top and bottom borders to our horizontal content area which we assigned earlier. We cannot see anything just yet since we set the positioning of this block to absolute. So we have to explicitly assign a top, bottom, left and right value to this element so that we will be able to place them accordingly. For now, let's set all the values to zero. So setting the top and bottom to zero, our horizontal lines are placed perfectly to the top and bottom, whereas our left, since it is in zero, it is sitting out here, as well as the right area. But our goal is to push the top and bottom borders outside the left and right area. We can do that by adding a negative value to the right, as well as the left property. So let's say we want to pull it 10 pixels outside. So let's assign negative 10 pixels to it. By doing so, we get this effect in our column. That is because by setting a negative value to our left and right, our border gets pushed out of the column. Now let's work on our inner vertical borders, which will involve setting a border value to the left and right border property. Now, 
We have to position this accordingly with the use of the top, bottom, left, and right CSS properties. For now, let's set all these properties to zero. Now you can see the borders placed properly on the left and right. However, we want to pull this downwards and the upper area upwards. To do that, we could set the top and bottom properties to negative 10 pixels to pull those borders out. And there you have it. We now have our inner borders set up correctly. So we're ready to work on our outer borders. Let's work on the horizontal outer border first. To be able to add that, we can make use of a CSS pseudo element. CSS pseudo elements are mainly denoted by double columns. So since we're adding that to our border horizontal class, it should be like this. I have also added a content property in the CSS block. And just like the inner borders, we could set the position to absolute or inherit. We can set inherit here because it will inherit its parent positioning. So since its parent is a border horizontal block and it's set to absolute, this block will also get the absolute positioning. Next, let's set the border property. Also, we could set the value to inherit so that it will inherit its parent's border properties. We cannot see the lines just yet since like the inner borders, we have to explicitly set the top, bottom, left and right properties since this element is positioned absolutely. For now, let's set the values to zero, then we can adjust them accordingly later so that we can have the lines in the correct positions we want. Let's start with the top and bottom, and to pull them out of the container, let's set them to a negative value. Let's say negative 10 pixels. Setting that to negative 10 pixels, in positioning will be a bit off because you have to consider the two pixels border width of the inner border. So if we try to increase that to 12, the lines will intersect properly. Then we'll have to push the edges inwards. To do that, we could set the, a positive value for the left and right positions. And there you have it. The top and the bottom outer borders are now aligned correctly. Let's proceed to the outer vertical border. And just like the outer horizontal border, we will use the pseudo element for the outer vertical borders, then set its position to absolute and the borders to inherit so that it will get the values of the vertical inner borders. Basically, same as the base properties of the outer horizontal border. So we can do it this way. Next, let's set an explicit values for the positions. What we want to do is have the outer vertical borders go beyond the inner border. So let's set the left and right values to negative 12. Then, to push the top and bottom edges inward, let's set them to 10 pixels. And now, we have our created border set up properly. And from this, we can style it up more by adding an animation effect when you hover your mouse through the column. What we want to do is to scale the borders down to zero when we hover to the column, so we can use the CSS transform property for this. But we're going to use scale X for the horizontal borders and scale Y for our vertical borders. Let's start by adding the hover effect to the horizontal lines. The code here means that when this column gets hovered, the horizontal borders get scaled to zero in the x-axis. Then, we'll continue adding the same transform property to the vertical borders. This time, we're adding the scale y since we will be scaling it through the y-axis. So as of the moment, if we hover to our columns, the borders will just disappear. In order for us to have a slight delay in animation to this hover effect, let's add a transition property to the parents or the inner borders, that is, our border horizontal and vertical. What this does is it will keep track if there is any changes in the transform property and set the ease timing function that will last 0.8 seconds. In the column's normal state, there is no transform property, but once we hover over to the column, the horizontal and the vertical borders scales accordingly to their respective axis, just like this. The transition and transform properties are very useful CSS properties that could help you do a lot of changes to your page element. 
so please feel free to check out other resources dedicated to these properties if you want to extend your knowledge about it. So there you have it. We're able to implement this creative border by adding two elements in a column and customizing through some lines of CSS. If you want to apply this to other columns, you can just save this as a preset then apply it to other columns like this. You may also rewrite this code and set it to a class, place it in a global CSS so that you can reuse it to any of the columns in your website. As usual, we will place a link in the description box below to adjust with the codes that we have used in this tutorial for you to use in your setup and also rewrite it to a border style you want to achieve. This concludes the first installment for the series and we look forward to bringing you more videos very soon. Thank you for watching and have a good one.